Well, thank you so much for uh, joining in on this time of Bible study today. Actually, it is Tuesday morning, and we are recording Bible study for Wednesday night. I sure wish there were going to be able to be some people here, but um, I'm glad that you have joined us by Facebook or by YouTube, and and, uh, so we just look forward to being able to spend some time studying together and being able to pray together. I want to make a couple of quick announcements, and I want to uh, just share with you that this coming Sunday, uh, we plan to be back in worship service this coming Sunday. We will have uh, Sunday morning worship at 1030. There will be no Sunday school and no evening uh, worship this week. We'll plan to hopefully get back uh, full steam by November, uh, but we will have Sunday morning service at 10.30, and so pass the word along. Of course, we will be uh, recording that service as well like we've been doing. I also want to uh, just uh, spend some time in prayer uh, before I share with you. I want to uh, remind us to be praying for those that um, are dealing with the COVID. I am doing great, and I thank you so much for uh, the prayers for me, I basically don't have any symptoms, and so uh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you for the prayers. But also, we, we do have others that um, are still struggling, and uh, we ask you to please be praying for them. Uh, also, we want to be praying for folks that's having other issues besides that of COVID. We got folks that are in the hospital. We got folks that uh, are having tests and um, procedures done, so we want to be remembering one another, and and I'm sure that uh, you're hearing that through your uh, deacons and Sunday school teachers and so forth. Um, and then finally, I want us to make sure that we're praying for our election that's coming up. Uh, here we are just a few days now away uh, from our very, very um, vitally important presidential election and other Uh, elections that will be taking place and we need to be praying for God to move and work in a mighty way in in that so let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we're going to jump right into the word of God father we thank you so much that we can spend this time together Lord we thank you that we have the opportunity to be able to study your word this morning and father I pray that your word will speak very very clearly to us today Father, I pray that you'd be with these needs that we've mentioned, Lord, and there are those needs that uh, we're not going to just share with, with everyone, but Lord, we, we know uh, of those needs of those that are sick, Lord, those that um, are, are having procedures done, those that, are, those that are having surgeries, those that are in the hospital. God, we pray for their uh, strength, their healing, their encouragement, and Lord, may you touch them and be very close and dear to them during this time. And then, Father, we pray for our uh, elections that are coming up. There, there's so many critical elections, and of course, none more critical than our uh, presidential election. And so, Lord, we pray that you would be with that election, and I pray that your will will be done in it, Father. And um, just let your sovereign purpose and will be carried out. We pray, Lord, for revival in our nation. We pray for revival in our community. We pray for revival in our church. We pray for revival in our lives individually. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to us today as we think about the visible signs of the presence of God in our life today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to take your Bibles, if you have them with you there, to turn with me to Exodus chapter 34. A couple of weeks ago on Wednesday night, we began a a message talking about the vital signs of the presence of God in our life. And in particular, we're looking at the life of Moses and we're considering the vital signs that were in his life that indicated that God was very much at work in him. And we thought about the fact that he had a hunger in his heart to know God at a deeper level. And, and that's obviously a vital sign for us if we want to consider whether or not we have this close relationship with God, that there would be a desire to know Him in a deeper level. But then also there was a definite sense of the progress of God 
in his, uh, of the uh, progressive work of God in his life. And, uh, and, and we probably can take a look at ourselves sometimes and understand that there is the desperate need for a renewal of the work of God in us because there's a staleness that has developed. Maybe it's because we're not spending the kind of time that we need to spend with God. We're not worshiping Him. We're not spending time in the Word. We're not praying like we should. And yet Moses had that move of God in his life in a very special way. But then also he had answered prayer. One of the things that he prayed for was that he would be able to see God. We noticed that in, in Exodus in our study last time where he, he requested to be able to see God. He said, I want to know you more fully. And God honored his request by putting him in the, the cleft of the rock and then literally walking by him and where Moses would see the back of God. What a blessing that was, incredible blessing that was for Moses. But then also there became a fresh awareness of the direction that God was working in his life. And God reaffirmed his purpose in the nation of Israel when he, when he spent this time with Moses. Remember, this is the time where Moses had received the law and the Ten Commandments. And he had come down from the mountain and he noticed the, uh, again the, what was going on in the camp, the worship of the golden calf and and all the things that happened, the judgment of God that came upon those that uh, participated in that. And then Moses is going to go back up on the mountain to receive the word of God again because he had thrown the, the uh, tablets down and they were destroyed. And so he's going to have uh, a, another time that he's going to be able to spend with God. But also, there's the spiritual desires that will overcome sensual demands we see. When it is a spiritual vital sign. In other words, the spiritual things of life become more important to us than the material things and the physical things of life. And today we want to think, though, now not about the vital signs that are those things that are on the inside, but we're going to be thinking about the visible signs of the presence of God in our life. Exodus chapter 34, beginning with verse 28, says, And so he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. He, he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he walked with him, while he talked with him. And so when and Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation and returned to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out, and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. The question for us today is, are there visible signs of the presence of God in your life? Again, as I said, I just mentioned the vital signs, but now today, are there visible signs? Is anyone in your life absolutely startled with the awareness of the fact that you have been with Jesus. Now, if God's glory is in our life, there will be visible signs. So here, let me mention some of the visible signs that we see in this passage when it comes to Moses. The first visible sign is you're going to notice that he has a life that is controlled by God. Verse 28, and so he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't eat bread. He didn't drink water. And he wrote on the tablets the words that God gave. And, and so we have a life that is totally controlled by God. In other words, one of the visible signs in our life is that God calls 
the shots. God is calling the shots in the life of Moses. Forty days on the mountain, and then he's going to come back again with the law. A person whose life has lost the glory will so many times say, well, I shouldn't or I ought not to do this or that. I shouldn't do these things. Christians should not be doing these things. That's not what we're going to say. Instead, we're going to say, God, I want to be obedient to you. We want to be obedient to him fully and completely. Instead, sometimes we say, well, I know I ought to not be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. That is not a life that is controlled by God. In fact, what we see here with Moses is that his time was controlled by God. Not only was his time controlled by God, his diet was controlled by God. The fact that he was going to fast while he was there on the mountain, his diet was controlled by God. His work is controlled by God. His attitude is controlled by God. Now, let's translate that into us for us today. I wonder, we ask the question, is my attitude being controlled by God? Is how I work being controlled by God? Even how I take care of my body, is it being controlled by God? You see, people are missing the glory of God because we, we become filled with ourselves. If we're filled with ourselves and not filled with the presence of the Lord, then we're going to lose the glory of God, the glory of his presence in our life. So God was in control of Moses, of, of his life. And Moses rested his reputation with God. He totally trusted God with his reputation. And there's a second thing. And that is that if we have visible signs of the presence of God, then we're going to have a countenance which will radiate the presence of God. When Moses came down off that mountain, the people understood that he had been with God. When he was on Mount Sinai, literally, his face was going to shine because he was in the presence of God. Look at verse 29. So it was when Moses came down from the mountain and, the two, and he had the two tablets of testimony in his hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know he didn't know when he came down from the mountain that his face literally shone with the glory of God. The reflection of God was in his countenance. When God is mightily at work in someone's life, it can be seen in our countenance. There was a couple one time that entered into a church service that uh, they were visiting at another church and they came in and um, the pastor noticed, man, there was just something really different about this couple that was visiting in his church that day. And, and others began to comment about there's something different. They not even really, really even spoken to them until after the service. And then they began to talk to them. And they said, man, something's a little bit different about you. There, there's an excitement in you. And they, this is what they said. They said that we are experiencing a revival of the presence of God in our church back home. And, and so that translated to how God showed in their countenance. And really even it was noticeable to people that were around them. Does your face reflect the presence of Christ? You see, when we're moved by the Spirit of God on the inside, and we have those spiritual vital signs that we were talking about, and we, we're in the presence of God, then that's going to begin to be revealed on the outside. And, and there's another thing, and that is that when we have these spiritual visible signs, uh, uh, one of those signs is that we will have an influence on others that's greater than what we possibly can imagine. Moses didn't even realize it. He was unaware that his countenance glowed. He was unaware of the impact that he was having upon his people when he came down from the mountain. In fact, we know that they were afraid. You can go back and look at the passage. They were afraid of him. His own brother was afraid of him. Backed up away from him, not knowing what had happened to Moses. 
And then Moses would say, look, you don't have to fear. But they saw the glory. And because they saw the glory of God in Moses' life, they were more willing to follow his leadership. We have an influence greater than can possibly imagine when we get into the presence of God and then that the presence of God can be then experienced by others. Moses would be one who would learn how, know how to wear the mantle of responsibility and authority that God had given to him. And people were amazed at the extent of his authority, but it was not because Moses had anything to offer. It was because God was moving and working in his life. The ingredient that caused them to desire to follow his leadership at this time was the fact that he was following the Lord's leadership. If we want others to be responsive to us and, 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 uh, and see God moving in us spiritually... And we want to have impact, and I pray that all Christians desire, we want to have an impact in our home, we want to have an impact in our churches, we want to have an impact in our community, in our nation, in our world, then, then we have to have a renewal of the presence of God in our own life. If someone put it this way, if you will take care of the depth of your Christian life, God will take care of the breadth of your influence. So if we concentrate and focus on wanting to know God more, not knowing about him, but knowing him more, walking in a close, intimate relationship with him, then he will spread our influence. The early Christians were filled with God, and they spoke the word of God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, when you study the book of Acts and, and the influence that they had, you can see that the people, when, when they spoke, when Peter spoke, when Paul spoke, when the other disciples spoke, as they were filled with the Spirit, that the people were literally spellbound. Courtrooms actually became in an uproar and kings were left in confusion over the message that was preached. And then another thing that happens when we have visible signs of the presence of God, and that is that there is a clear-cut sense of mission in your life. Look at verse 32. It says, Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. Moses now had a new sense of mission. He had already come down from the mountain one time. He had seen the golden calf. He had, he had cast down the tablets. Judgment had come upon the camp. Sin was dealt with. He goes back up on the mountain. He receives the word. He comes back down. He shares the word with the people. He delivered to the children of Israel all that God had for them. He had a clear-cut new sense of purpose in his life. The saddest people in all the world are people who operate in life with no sense of purpose. They have no mission. People with no ambition. No ambition. Some people's only ambition is to just make it through another day. I'm going to tell you that as a believer in Jesus Christ, we are given a reason and a purpose to get up every day. And, and Moses understood that purpose. And there was a renewal in his life to, to carry out that purpose. Do you have a clear-cut sense of the mission and purpose and direction of God in your life? Or do you have a sort of anything goes type approach to life? I'm grateful to be able to say that I know in my own life, I haven't always carried out the, the purpose of God, but I do know this. I do know that God gives me every day 
an opportunity to carry out his purpose. There is a purpose in my life. And ultimately, for those of us that are believers, the number one purpose in our life is that we give glory and honor to him. So we have to think about at the beginning of every day, Lord, I want to give you glory and I want to give you honor. Think about in your own life, there has to be some settled convictions some settled convictions that will be indicative of a clear-cut mission in our life. For as believers, there ought to be some settled convictions that we have. The first settled conviction that you have to have to be able to carry out the purpose and mission of God in your life is to know that you're saved. We have to know that we're saved. We have to know that we've had an experience with Jesus Christ where we have surrendered our life to him. You have to also believe the Bible. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, we have to believe that the Bible is the absolute word of God. That we have a conviction that this book is the word of God. And that we will also participate in his work. That we will participate in his work through the church. You know, it is, it is God's desire for us to participate in his mission, in his work in the world. And the way that he has chosen to carry out his mission and work in the world is through the church. I didn't make that up. No man made that up. God has done that. And we carry out his mission through the local church. I know we've been challenged here, boy, this 2020 with all that's been going on to, to really being staying actively involved in the local church. But I challenge you today to if you're, if you're not involved, to get involved. If you are involved, get more involved. We want to carry out his purpose through the life of the church the purpose of reaching our community, the purpose of reaching our state, the purpose of reaching our world, you and I have, have a purpose that we're to carry out. And we have to have the conviction that we believe in the local church. But then also that God will rule us in our everyday life. That we will be submissive to him in our everyday life. And we also need to make the commitment that we want to tell others about Jesus. A commitment to tell. A commitment to live in such a way that others will be able to see Jesus in us. And then the last thing I'll share with you. And that is that, that one of the visible signs of the presence of God in Moses' life, and it can be in my life, can be in your life, is a depth in our relationship with God that is difficult to communicate. All Israel knew was that there was more happening in Moses' life. They knew, they all knew something different was going on in Moses' life. That his relationship with God was great, but it was so much so that Moses had a difficult time expressing what was going on. Verse 33, and Moses had finished speaking with them. He put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out, and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, the skin of his face shone, Moses would put the veil back on his face again until he went to speak with the Lord. There was a depth in his relationship with God that he could not express. People today are oftentimes a mile wide and an inch deep. We're an inch deep even spiritually. Have you had an experience with God that was so deep that you had a difficult time expressing yourself? People today, many times, let's just be honest, we have a surface relationship with Jesus. And we've not gone very deep. One of the things that, that I've been preaching on on Sundays is what, what we can learn in the midst of adversity. When we have adversity, God wants us to help us 
wants to help us to go deeper in our relationship, in our fellowship with him. Israel, when they looked at Moses, they saw the veil. And when they saw the veil, they knew Moses had been with God. He simply could not speak totally of all the experiences that he had with God. But God so bathed him with his presence that his face shone for days. Moses would put the veil on, I believe, so that they would not see the glory began to fade. But when he would go back and get into the presence of God again, he would take off the veil. And listen, they could even see when he came back through the veil, the glory of the presence of God. My question for us today is, have we lost the glory? I didn't say have we lost God. I didn't say have we lost the relationship with God. I said, have we lost the sense of his glory? The sense of his presence. What about it, uh, those of you that teach in the church? Sunday school teachers, Bible study leaders, preachers. Those that lead worship. Choir members. Have we lost the sense of the glory of God in our life? So that people, when they look at us, they don't see Jesus in our countenance. My prayer is, listen, Tim, when when we come together in worship and when we're out there among the people every day, that there'll be something different seen about us. Have Have our lessons that we teach become bare? Has our messages become boring even to us? Has our singing become something less than exciting to even us to be able to participate in? When you meet with God, when you meet with God, a quiet revolution begins to take place. When you have a meeting with God, A quiet revolution begins to take place. This is what happens when we begin to meet with God. And boy, do we need to meet with God now. If ever there was a time, we've been saying this over the last seven months, if ever there was a time we need to be meeting with God and what we're seeing going on in our country, if ever there's a time to meet with God, it's now when we meet with God. And we study the Bible. The word of God comes alive. When you've had a real meeting with God, the word of God comes alive. Your mouth and your heart then become filled with praise. As our mouth, our heart, our lips filled with praise. When we meet with God, then we have that praise coming from our lips. And words become inadequate. To really describe what's going on in us. David said in the Psalms, I think he would just become so overwhelmed by the presence of God. He maybe as as well as he expressed himself over and over again. There were times like he couldn't even express the glory of what he was feeling. And he would say, oh, how I sing a new song to the Lord. A new song being sung to the Lord. Peter and John, in Acts chapter 3, after Peter had been used by God to heal the lame man, Peter and John go into the temple and they begin to share and they begin to preach what had happened and and that that man had been healed in the name of of Jesus who had just been crucified. But this is what I want you to note. That the people said in Acts chapter 3. That they took notice. That Peter and John had been with God. That they had been 
with Jesus. Do people take notice of us every day that we have been with Jesus? My prayer is that the desperately needed world around us, our family, our friends, our work associates, our schoolmates, our team members, that they will take note that we have been with Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be able to spend this time with you. And Lord, my prayer is that the people around us will be fully aware of your presence in our life and that visibly people will be able to see a difference in us and desire to have you to work in their life as well. Oh, Lord, help us to be a shining light in this dark, dark world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I hope that uh, you were blessed as a result of uh, participating in this study. And as I said, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning, Sunday morning live, here at 1030 in the worship, uh, here in the worship time at Sweetwater. And if you can't join us, if you're still sick and can't be here, uh, there are other reasons that you can't be here. We will be recording the service, and you'll be able to uh, uh, stay up with us as to what's going on. But be praying for the services Sunday. We look forward to seeing you then.